Well, good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord. It's good to be together and to worship God. There's a fear away today. May they have also a blessed time. But I'm sure that we will have a blessed time. We have come into his house and we sing this one first. We have come into his house. We have come into his house. Jesus Christ, all glory be to you. We just pray that you would direct and guide us and lead us by your Holy Spirit as we meditate and listen to your word. Just ask that you have, have control in all things. May your presence be felt. May you be our guest. And we thank you with two or three are gathered in your name. You're in their midst. And may our gathering be truly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I believe God. <clears throat> yeah. I believe God. I believe God. I trust you will and it shall be done. Thank you. 
you're a believer, sometimes it's a lonely walk. Not everybody shares your faith. Some people may be religious, but they don't, they're not believers. So if you believe, you're often on your own, but not completely on your own. The Lord's with you. Amen. Next one I have is, I shall not be moved. Jesus is my Savior, I shall not be moved. In His love and Savior, I shall not be moved. Just by Your strength, that stands above the storm. I shall not be moved. I shall not, I shall not be moved. that one.
Praise the Lord. Got another one here. Heaven came down. We haven't sung that for a while. Probably since birth was gone. <laughs> oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. The day I will fills your soul you will know when that happens it is supernatural I just heard uh, last night I was listening to some things a man he heard from a man who said Lord I want the Holy Ghost if you don't give me the Holy Ghost you find a bunch of bones here in the morning or next day or next week or whatever and this man knew that story so he tried the same thing he went out to pray one evening. It was a frosty night, he said. And he went lying on a frost and said, Lord, if you don't give me the Holy Ghost, you find me dead in the morning. And then he said, whoa, it was too cold a night to die. So he went back inside. <laughs> so, um, you know, it doesn't work that way for everybody. We heard uh, Brother David on the other day. He was lying in bed and started to cry, the Lord touched him. No man, no church, just the Lord there. You know, it's, it's really an individual affair. We cannot copy others. So, praise the Lord. Heaven came down for me. I remember that. And I will always remember that. Let's sing, I will serve thee because I love thee. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
sing some of these songs because it's not a reality you just sing along that's true and uh, sometimes we go along and <clears throat> it's not a reality until the Lord quickens something to us then we can write our own songs just on that line isn't it so true you know I just heard from someone who has um, struggled a little bit with something with the Lord and you know sometimes people think why doesn't the Lord do this why doesn't he do that way? And why do I have to go through this? And why, you know, we can question the Lord. Why doesn't he answer my prayer? I'll tell you one thing. This 
sister said, yeah, the revelation. In an instant, just having those thoughts, and it came to mind, the Lord owes me nothing. <laughs> it's so true. If you come in the right attitude, the Lord owes you nothing. He is love. He is the giver of life. He doesn't owe it to us. He didn't need to go to Calvary and die for your sin. He didn't owe it to us. He is a, grace, a gracious God. And if we come with that thought, He owes me nothing. Oh, well, I've been serving the Lord for 30 years and this. He owes me nothing. Absolutely nothing. I could have done much better, you know, <laughs> if it comes to that. He owes us nothing. But He's given us us everything. Praise God. If that sinks in, you know, everything changes. Everything changes. Jesus, all for Jesus. Let's sing that one.
of God, we walk in the light. Let's sing that one. We walk in Well known, often quoted, often quoted only (laughs) half of the truth, but uh, it says here, for all, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Let's just pray again, Lord Jesus. So we meditate upon your word this morning. I pray that you will quicken it to us by your Holy Spirit. Lord, that to me be everlasting fruit from it. I ask in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. You know, as you go through life, you see a lot of things. If you go to churches and, and, and have a, a belief in God, you have your ups, you have your downs, you have all sorts. Your disappointments. And uh, last night, <clears throat> I couldn't sleep, so I was listening to some old sermons from about six years ago or more. And it was very interesting. I've heard different professing ministers sharing something. And I thought, man, that's really nice. It's really good. They all say good things. They all say good things. And then a a thought crossed my mind, not because of these people, but a thought crossed my mind. The scripture says... Not all who say, Lord, Lord, have we not in your name cast out demons, preached the gospel and all these different things. And he said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And I thought, well, how can a man cast out demons and preach the gospel and be a preacher of righteousness and not knowing the Lord? The Lord is true and faithful to his word. And whoever puts faith into it will um, see, see he, he'll, uh, he is true to it. But you know, there's a difference between preaching truth and having a life to follow. What is it doing? What is iniquity? Workers of iniquity is doing things you know you shouldn't be doing. That's iniquity. If you know it's wrong and you do it, keep on doing it. It's iniquity. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Well, I don't sin anymore. I live a regular life now. But sometimes there might be things you know you shouldn't be doing and you do them. It's iniquity. We need the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse us from these things. So I was meditating upon that. What is it? The ingredients. There's two ingredients. There's the Holy Spirit that does anoint, that does cast out demons, that does preach the good news, that does healing. And then there's the element of man. I want to do it my way. And the Bible teaches us very clearly we have to be dead to self. And if we're not dead to self, 
even though we see a manifestation of Christ, we ourselves may not be the servants of Christ. I thought that was quite, quite tremendous. <laughs> it really struck me last night. But we're going back to Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and come short of the, of the glory of God. <clears throat> And I think that's one of the first revelations everybody needs to know. Hey, I'm a sinner. Well, sometimes if it's not real, oh, I haven't really done anything wrong. I said sorry for that. You know, we think that way. You know, sometimes we, we also think, well, we were born predestined. Just do whatever. At the end you go to heaven. You know, that's uh, predestination. I'm predestined. So, yeah, I thought, thought about that one too. If you are uh, a son of, uh, of your father, say so make it this way, Brother Chris, he's got um, five sons. Three sons, three sons sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Two daughters and three sons, yeah. He's got three sons. And two daughters. And according to the flesh, you're one of his. Predestined. You're one of his. His flesh and blood. You, you can say you're predestined to inherit the lovely house he's got and all these different things. You're, you're going to be an heir one day. Because you're of him. You're predestined. But if you become... Uh, rebellious, work against him, cause harm, he can blot out that name on the testament. And the, even though you're predestined, you go empty handed. Happened to many a good people. I once read a story, a true story, which really touched my heart. This man, he was quite a rich man, and he had, uh, I don't know, three children or how many uh, but one was a real rebel he was so bad that he left the house he did a lot of harm to the family he did a lot of harm to the dead and he knew what was going on he knew they're going to be on a holiday a certain time so he decided to break in he said well the old man's got enough money I should help myself to it so he went there and he found the treasure, tre treasure, and he opened it up. He broke into it, and he ripped it open. And then he found the will of the father, and he found his name on it. That made him repent, even though he w was so bad and did so many bad things to us, towards his father and family. He still put him on a will to inherit the money so he was so touched he changed his life if we see while we were yet sinners Christ died for us it should have the same effect it should have the same effect so you know God can blot out your name from the book of life we say we, we, we know you know when we seal with the Holy Ghost is until the day of redemption Bible talks about blotting out the name he can blot out the name from the book of life. He can do that. And the Bible also says, make your election and calling sure. In Peter, he says that. So, well, if I'm elected, what, making it sure? Yeah, live accordingly. If you are a son of God, live like a son of God. If you're a daughter of God, live like a daughter of God. That's making your election sure. Put the word of God into action. The action is not actually saving us, but it shows that we are believers. You know, in James you have a similar one. You know, um, show me your faith by your works. It's not by works you're saved, but if you have faith, works will follow. So the action to be active is not saving us, but it shows that we're believers. 
if we're really believers, why are we worried about certain things? Why are we uh, concerned about some of the things going on if we know we're the Lord's? We don't need to do that. So Romans 3, I read from verse 20 to 26. It says, Therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So we cannot be justified, made right with God, by the law, by the deeds of the law, by trying to fulfill the law. Because the law has been given for us to obey, and we all fail to obey the law. Even the most dedicated people fail to live by the law, by every commandment. So the law was given that we have a knowledge of sin. So we can see we, we can actually not do what God told us to do. We cannot do it. Thou shalt not kill. I never killed anybody. But have you ever felt a bit of hatred towards somebody? Or unkindness? The Bible says if you hate your brother, you're a murderer. So you break already that commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods beside me. Have you ever had a little idol or something that took preference before the Lord? You see, it happens. So we cannot be saved by the law. But the law was given for us to see how, how we are sinners. It actually tells us that. So then in verse 21 he says, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. The righteousness of God is not by keeping a law. It's not by that because you can't. But it's by faith in Jesus Christ. I find it so wonderful. Because he's the end of the law. He's the one that paid the price. And by faith in him, we are going to be justified. Made righteous. Receiving the righteousness of God. It says, even the righteousness... Of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. Now I read that verse again. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means it's for everyone has to come that way. The only way is by faith in Jesus Christ. That's the only way. Then it says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past, through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. He is the propitiation through faith in his blood. That's why I believe the enemy does not want the blood to be mentioned. I've heard so many stories from people taking the blood out of songs, taking the blood. Oh, it sounds so gruesome. The blood, that's where the power is. We sing there is power in the blood. That's where it is. And it, through faith in his blood. That's where it is. Faith in his blood. Not faith, oh, I know this, I heard that, I believe this, I believe that. Faith in his blood. That's the only thing that will do it. Seeing the hour we're living in, knowing that the coming of Christ is at hand, we ought to be careful in our walk with the Lord. I, honestly, we have to be careful how we walk. Are we 
in, walking into faith? Is he everything to us? We can sing, he's everything, he's everything to me, but is he everything? Is our mind, our life focused on Jesus Christ day and night? Or have you got other things in mind? Oh, uh, oh, I'm more interested in this. I'm more interested in that. I want to go to see this um, football match on Sunday morning rather than go to church. Or You know, where is our heart? Where is our mind? Where is our focus? You know, it's a great falling away, the Bible says in the last days. And, you know, I see it. I see it. E even... When we started church 30 odd years ago, there was more of a move. People were more interested to, to come together to seek the Lord. I remember we had little meetings, we come together and we talk about the Lord and think, we're waiting for Him to come on the scene. And He did. And today, there's a lack of expectation. There's a lack of desire because there's so many distractions out there. We've never had so many distractions. How many hours does the average person spend behind a television screen or computer screen today? Lots and lots of hours. You never had that 20 years ago. You never had that distraction. Well, what do you do with your spare time? You can read a newspaper and that's about it, and, or read a book. But no, you had more time, you had less distractions. Now we have all these distractions around us, but the hour is late. I believe that. And we want to be revived. You know, I've heard so many people saying, oh, like in the good old days. <coughs> I don't believe in the good old days, I believe in today. I want today to be good. <laughs> so I hear these things, oh, the Lord used to come and people were coming early to church and crying, you know, just seeking God and crying and this and the other. Well, where is it? Oh, it's church. I hope he's not too long. And, you know, uh, or, but that's what is lacking. Oh, his preaching is boring. Or Now, you're seeking the Lord. You're not seeking to hear from men, you're seeking the Lord. You can go in a meeting and pray and be blessed. You can be amongst a bunch of unbelievers or religious cranks and you still can be blessed and have a good time in the Lord. Amen. It's between you and Him. Yes. If I take my wife, we go arm in arm, wherever we go, we have a good time together. If there are bad things out there, good things out there, if there's a storm out there, it doesn't make any difference. And if you walk with the Lord, it's the same thing. So let's never try to blame circumstances on the lack of having a relationship and the joy of the Lord in our lives. Let's never uh, attribute it to circumstances. It happens. Oh, you poor thing. You poor thing. You've got to work so much, you know. Sure, you know, you struggle so much and... You have so many children, you have to do this and you have that, and the husband's not, not, you know, pulling his weight and this, and, you know, oh, you poor thing, you haven't even got a husband. No, that has nothing to do with it, absolutely nothing. Even a man complaining, oh, my wife this and my wife that, has nothing to do with that. Be a man. Don't blame circumstances at your lack of faith in Jesus Christ. You know, it's a weak excuse to do that. Blame everything. Blame the church. Blame the preacher. Blame the wife. Blame the husband. Blame everything. Blame the children. Blame the job. Blame the circumstances. It's not for us to do. I worship God. Look at the disciples. The apostles. Beaten in prison. Worshipping God. We were worthy to suffer for our Lord. There was no wife, no nurse to uh, heal, uh, touch up their wounds, no nothing. They were rejoicing. They knew where they stood. They were in the faith. And if we're in the faith, there's no room for that complaining and feeling sorry for oneself. Absolutely not. Walk in the way, uh, or in a way that proves that you're a believer. 
Well, uh, are you coming with me tomorrow? Will we go there? Oh, sorry, no. I'm going to church. I mean, going to church is one thing. We ought to fellowship with one another. That's what scripture says. But, you know, to prove that we're a believer, we actually do it. Oh, come with me to the pub. Just have a couple of beers, you know. You don't have to get drunk. Sorry, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't go to those places. You know, prove that you're a believer. You know, today everything's so casual. Oh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Some things don't matter. I said, I often said, if you go to a place, a worldly place, it's got to have a purpose to witness to, to, to people or to bring somebody to the Lord or something like that. I know people that they're not Christians, they're not following the Lord, but they're seeking. And I spend time with them, trying to encourage them, trying to show them the love of God, that they may come to know Jesus Christ themselves. So another thing is we want to be mindful of all that God created, all God's creation. We have to be mindful, appreciative, and especially your fellow men. <laughs> We forget that. We think, oh, take this, do that, kick the cat, beat the dog, uh, shoot the bird for fun, you know, do all these things. No, it's all what God created. Sure, He given it to us, but we have to have respect for these things. Especially for your fellow man who Christ died for. I'd like to read you another story here, Matthew 18, verses 21 to 20, 34. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him. Till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Wow. Until 70 times 7. That's 490 times. Daily, I would say. That's what Jesus said. You know, as a man, you think, no, that's enough. You know, he harmed me so much. But every time he says, look, I'm really sorry, I would just say, okay, I forgive you. We should do that. Every time. Because we want the same to happen to us. And you know, if the Lord of Lords, our Master and Teacher and Saviour, says you forgive 490 times, wouldn't He Himself forgive you 490 times? Isn't that wonderful? You can come to Him any time uh, when you repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I failed you. I don't want to do that. Cleanse me from this. I believe in the blood that cleanses me from all sin. You can come 490 times. He said it. He expects it of us. He certainly would do it himself. So it's actually quite a blessing to know that. So he says here, Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. When he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him ten thousand talents. He had a huge debt. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. Well, that's pretty rough. <laughs> you know, nowadays, what, what happens if you can't pay your debt? You have a mortgage, the bank comes and takes your house away and sells it. If you owe the bank $50,000 and the house is, is, is worth $500,000, the bank is only interested in their $50,000, they can rip it off you and do that. And if you haven't got the money, you have to declare bankrupt and this and the other. But in those days, sell them. Might get a few few talents for him and sell his wife, sell his children and sell everything he's got he owes and that was 
very, very rough and tough. Then it says here, the servant therefore fell down and worshipped him saying, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. Isn't that wonderful? He forgave him the debt. You know, I called this little Bible study, Jesus paid it all. So he forgave him the debt. <clears throat> then it says in verse 28, but the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence, which is very little, and he had laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. So here is a man who has a huge debt. And the Lord forgives him, or, or the, the one he's indebted to, forgives him that big debt. You would think you appreciate being forgiven. It should give you an attitude towards others. You don't want to hold anything against anybody else. You shouldn't. You never should have ought against anybody else. I had a, a man that cheated me for a few thousand dollars. And I shared it with a few people, but I didn't feel good about it. And I decided not to talk about it anymore. And the other day, somebody wanted to, what happened, what happened, this and the other? And I said, yeah, yeah, he never paid. Oh, you should take him to court. And it started again. No, I want to let it go. I want to forgive the poor man. I don't want to ask it back, so I don't want to talk about it. Because I had a big debt forgiven. I had been uh, indebted, like this man, uh, a debt you could never pay. And the Lord forgave me. So I want to have an attitude towards everybody else. Nothing is impossible with God. Jesus paid it all in full. So this man, he had all his debt forgiven. And then he found one who owed him a little bit. And he attacked him, grabbed him by the throat. Now you pay up. You pay up. Pay me that thou owest, he says. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Same thing. Then it says, And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that he was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Whoa! I'm predestined. I'm predestined. Now I have to put into action, prove and show that I'm a believer in Christ. If I don't do that, it's just empty words. It's actually bringing, bringing shame unto the name of the Lord. Forgive your brother their trespasses. And if somebody has harmed you in a great way, you have the power to forgive. If the Holy Ghost is in you, you have the power to forgive. You may have a, a battle, you know. There's the mind, there's the natural, there's the influences. But you can say, I'm a believer. I don't want to have any old, This person might die tomorrow and I left that burden on him. I haven't forgiven. Or I might die tomorrow and I take it with me to the grave. No, let's forgive. Let's live according to what we confess to be. If I'm a Christian... 
Far be it from me to misuse the name of the Lord. Far be it from me to, to use foul language. Far be it from me to call people names. We shouldn't do that. Oh, it's so easy to say, oh, he's an idiot. You know, it's so easy to say that. But we should not say these things. We should not do that. Now, no matter how successful we are in our lives, or even if we fail, let us never forget and confess that we have sinned and that Jesus paid it all. Let's always remember that. I read a quote from Brother Branham yesterday. It's so simple, but it really touched me. He says, Yesterday I was in a place and the man was measuring me for a suit that a brother here in the church bought me. He said, Your suit looks hot and I bought you a cool one. <laughs> and I went over to get it cut and he said, Say, your right shoulder is dropping down. So <laughs> he's measuring up and he said, Your right shoulder is dropping down. You must have carried a heavy load someday. And I thought, yes, a load of sin, but Jesus paid it all. Isn't that lovely? What comes to your mind when you yeah, I had a hard life, you know. I, no, Jesus paid it all. The load of sin, Jesus paid it all. I really love that. Now I'm going to 1 Corinthians 7, verse 20 to 24. Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he is called. Art thou called being a servant? Care not for it. But if thou mayest be free, use it rather. For he that is called in the Lord being a servant is the Lord's freeman. Likewise also he that is called being free is Christ's servant. Ye are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called, therein abide with God. So what do you think if, if the Lord made, made a, a flower, made a rose, you know? Well, a rose should stay a rose. If the rose says, oh, I want to look more like a lily and sort of spit out a few petals in the middle, you know, it's, it's never a lily. It's just a, an ugly looking rose. It's, it's not what he made it to be. And I think sometimes there's too much ambition and too much of men involved trying to be something we're not meant to be. If he made us simple, stay simple. If he made us a laborer, be a laborer. But if the boss comes and says, look, I want to put you in charge and my, you make a good manager, then you're free to take it. He says, take it rather. But we have to abide in what we are and serve the Lord in what we are. You are bought with a price. What's the price? What was it? What was the cost? The blood of Jesus Christ. You bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. Be not ye the servants of men. So easy to serve men. So easy to serve men. Some men have the ability and use psychology and everything else to talk really nice, to, uh, to give you praise for this. And you start to serve that man. And you, you get praises and pats on the back you start to serve that man. But the Bible says, serve the one who paid the price. He shed the blood. Number one thing is between him and you. It's very important that we not become servants of men, but serve God and abide in that. If we truly believe that the Lord Jesus Christ paid it all, then there is no claim, no boasting that we done or paid anything of ourselves what does it do what does it do to you That's, you can't be I'm proud to be a Christian You know, what's the pride 
oh, I've done this, I've been good, good boy now, uh, I, I stopped drinking and smoking, and now I'm, I'm helping people. No, that doesn't count. That's, that's what we should do. But it's not anything of our own self. Well, I believe this and I believe that, and I'm preaching and I've been mi doing missionary work, and uh, that doesn't count. That doesn't count. That actually puffs you up. That makes you think you are something when you're nothing. You know, if you promote it, in a, say in a company, you promote it to be the manager. And then you go in, and oh, this, this little labor is here, you know, we can replace you any day. You know, like that. You haven't actually understood that the promotion is not because you're so good. Maybe in, in the natural world you get promote, promoted if you are good, but in the ways of the Lord, it's always we saved by grace. A revelation produces humility. Knowledge puffs up and makes people arrogant. It does. The Bible says knowledge puffs up. But if we start to think, oh, I know something, you know nothing, that's arrogance. We never actually tasted the grace of God, if we like that. It's like I said at the beginning, Lord, Lord, have we nothing in your name? You know, cast out these demons, done this, and preached all these wonderful uh, revelations and things. Away, your works of iniquity. Never knew you. And I often, like I said, I wondered, how can that be? Here's the Holy Ghost, yes, and here's man. And man has to be out the way, so God gets all the glory. That's really what it is. So, true revelation of the grace of God will produce humility. Well, I was nothing until he found me. I can testify of that. I was nothing until he found me. He found me. When I was at my worst, praise God. The things of the Lord reveals to us His grace. He reveals to us His grace. That is what, what, what we should get out of the Word of God, to see His grace. If someone else did not receive all the revelations, you did, don't think of yourself to be a greater person, something more important. No. It's, it's like we said, walk in the calling you are called. If the Lord reveals you something and you walk with that, praise God. You don't have to compete. It's not a competition. You only can have what God gives you. And if God gave you something and you appreciate you coming to that fellowship. I know a man, or he's probably long dead now, he was about 90 years old when I, when I heard him. He used to go to a convention year after year. He came from Italy. And he went to the pulpit. All he was saying every year, the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed me from all sin. That's what his testimony was. He never preached a sermon or anything deep, that was what he was testifying. Well, if that's all you know, you know very much. <laughs> Stay in your calling. So, um, just uh, closing here, I've got one or two more thoughts. It is what we do with what we have received from the Lord. That counts. What are we doing with what we have received? Oh, oh! I haven't really got anything. Or I'm a woman. I'm not supposed to preach anyway. So I haven't. No. <laughs> Have you received anything from the Lord? Have you received a gift of prayer, compassion for people? Pray. Yeah, you know. You use what you have from the Lord. You use what you have. You know the story when Samson saw these thousand Philistines coming armed against him. He had no weapon in a hand, 
But he saw a jawbone. And he picked it up and he got the victory using what was there. Using what, what was there. Sometimes people say, well, if I, yeah, I just got a letter the other day, an email. This person wants money. Oh, we want to uh, open a Bible school for a thousand ministers. And we want to open a hundred orphanages. And we want to do this, and we want to do that. Can you please send us some money? You know, that's, I got that email yesterday. But you know, what do you do with what you have? I've seen a man in India. He had, you can see nothing. He had an old push bike, horrible old push bike. He lived in a, in a, in a very basic hut. And um, I was at his place. He was not educated. He didn't even know how old he was. I mean, that's, uh, he didn't know how old he was or anything. But he received something from the Lord. He got some Bibles, maybe bought them, whatever. And he put them on his bush bike, push bike and went around to those Hindus and, and gave them a Bible and talked to them about the Lord. He didn't ask for, for millions and... To, to build this and the other he did something with what he had and uh, I thought that was wonderful that, that uh, really showed me some uh, attribute of Christ I, I see some of the word in that and uh, he got run over on his bike and the bike was a mess and, and I had some uh, I received an offering while I was overseas and I had some, some of this offering and I bought, bought him a little scooter. He nearly died of a heart attack. He couldn't believe it. You know, he, I was actually worried. He sunk together. You know, he, he couldn't believe it You know, when he heard that I bought him that thing. But, you know, he did something with what he had. I've heard of another man. He was half deaf and he couldn't talk properly but then the Lord came in his heart and you know the Lord loves me he had all his saves and he bought pamphlets and handed out pamphlets he did something with what he had and what are we doing with what we have a lot of people have ambitions to be something else something greater and fail to actually use what is God given that's the only thing that actually has an effect. What is God given, what you acquire yourself, will not have the same effect. The effect of what you acquire yourself is you want to bring glory to yourself. Look at me, what I'm doing. You know, it's, it's just such a trap. You see, I want to hear the Lord saying to me one day, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. There has been faithful over a few things, I will make thee ruler over many things into, thou, into the joy of thy Lord. <laughs> thou hast been faithful over a few things. He didn't get, get big things, but he's been faithful with the few things he had. And I thought, you know, be true to what is given to you. Just for an example, let's just make an example. If a man earns $500 a week and he says, oh, well, I want to give some to the Lord. And he gives $250 away to the Lord. Just make an example. No suggestion. I make an example. And then there is another man. He makes $10,000 a week and he gives away $4,000. He's actually given less than the other <laughs> He gets 5,000. He's just done the same thing. But in the sight of man, we think, oh, he's done this, he's given that. Oh, it's easier to, for him, it's only $250. No, it's half of his income. You know, we sometimes don't look at it that way. We have to walk before the Lord. He doesn't judge us by, by uh, how much we have, is by what we do with what we have. That's really what it comes to. 
So if he has given you the ability sorry, to help, then help. If that's all you can do, then be a helper. He will not ask you things which are not possible. He will not ask you things you cannot do. The Lord will never ask you that. You may ask yourself or people ask you for things, but the Lord never asks you above what he can do. He says, be holy as I am holy. Well, if the Lord asks you to be holy, then there's a way to be holy. Faith in Jesus Christ. He gave you everything, so we ought to give him everything, our heart. And the Holy Spirit in you can do all things. Now I just finish with, with a couple of statements and a, a, a little quote here. Get the smallest tree, the smallest tree, meaning that's a young babe in Christ, and set it by the fountain of water, the inexhaustible life of Christ. Then you're positionally placed in Christ. And when you're in Christ, by the Holy Spirit, then all these qualities of the Holy Spirit live in you. So even if you are just say, Lord, I want to believe, I come to you, I give my heart to you, I want to live for you, you direct me. You know, you planted by, <laughs> in the Word of God, you may not show forth all the fruit, but potentially it's all in you. It's all in you. By your desire, you can tell who is on the throne of your heart. By what you love, that's what tells. If it's, oh well, she likes that, he likes that, well, pray for them. Pray for them. Bible says if you love the things of the world, the love of God is not even in you. The love of God is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is looking to Christ, to God. How can I please God? How can I live for Him? It, it, you know, it's, it's such a deception to think we know something, we believe this, we do that, but the way it works out in our lives is not according to the word, then we fool ourselves. It's not wrong to, 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 to like something, but if it goes above the things of the Lord, you know, that's, that's what the problem. By what is feeding your soul, what your soul is thirsting for, and you can see it satisfies that, if it isn't the Word, then there's something wrong because the Holy Spirit lives on the Word only. That's what Brother Brown said. So, uh, last question or statement. If Jesus paid it all, ask yourself, have you received it all? If He paid it all, have you received it all? Do you really b believe it's all paid? It's all paid. Receive it all. Could we just sing a song? Now let's pray first, then we sing um, this song. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for your love and mercy. And Lord, you know the day we live in, everything comes to an end, everything comes to a peak. And we know that this world cannot go on much longer the way it is. The sinful world world full of violence, world full of sin, and world full of, of adultery and fornication and, 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 and all these perverse things. Lord, you have destroyed the world before because of that. And Lord, I believe the time is, is close at hand that you would come for your children. I just pray help us not to get influenced and affected by the things of the world, not to become indifferent, but to know that you have never changed, that you are the I am, that the same yesterday, today and forever. Help us, Lord, just to, to look to Calvary, to know that you shed your blood for our sins, that we can be in the faith now, believing in Jesus Christ, 
receiving the Holy Ghost, receiving the power to live in victory for the glory of God. Just pray that you would help us and strengthen us. Help us also, Lord, to have an attitude of mercy towards our fellow brothers and sisters and our fellow men, Lord, who, who may not see what we see. Let us always stay humble and give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's sing Jesus Paid It All. Let's sing that one. Such a simple thought and such a simple song, but he did pay it all. Then there's no more debt if he paid it all. So we're not indebted to anybody. He paid it all. <clears throat> I hear the Savior say, I strength in me is small. I love weak as much in pain. in me thy all in all. Jesus paid it all. into my heart come into my heart Lord Jesus and you know I just as we sang I just felt I actually felt that there are battles going on you know sometimes things come towards you and I think why do the things pound me while I'm preaching the gospel while I sing because the devil does not want the word be manifested he does not want you to believe that all is paid he doesn't want you to have faith in Jesus Christ and make him your life that's true that's why these battles are there but don't listen to the devil listen to the word of God which is true sing it and mean it into my heart Oh. 
say amen. Just as I said before during the meeting, don't worry about what others do. It may affect you. The unbelief of others may affect you. It disappoints you. You're looking back to so-called better times. But we live in the last days. Everything comes comes up, you know, it comes to a peak. The bad and the good. That's why we experience these various things. Be compassionate. Pray for those who are not in the way. And don't be angry. Forgive them and pray for the salvation of their souls. Amen. God bless you all.